right, guys, welcome back to another video. We have some very interesting stuff to go over today, but we will start off here with PlayStation bringing their trophies over to PC, becoming more and more like Xbox when it comes to their multi-platform vision of the console and PC and everything integrated into one space. And I think this is very good to see, very happy that this is happening. And honestly, probably wouldn't have gone into where it is right now if it wasn't for the expansion of Xbox and, and bringing out their entire ecosystem. And then also seeing how successful it is to get people jumping into your games that aren't locked to the console itself. Now, before we get into anything further, just make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you're new here, you enjoy daily gaming news content. And if you like Spotify, you want to listen to the audio version, check out the link in the description below. So as I said, PlayStation is officially bringing trophies over to PC, and this is going to come with the release of Ghosts of Tsushima on PC, which is uh, an awesome PC game or game for PlayStation to hit the, play, the PC platform. And it says here, the game will be released on PC on May 16th. A new PlayStation PC overlay will also debut with the release of Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut. It says Ghost of Tsushima's Director's Cut is the first PlayStation title on PC that uses a new PlayStation overlay, which includes your friends list your trophies, your settings, and your profile, explained Nixus Software's Julian Hubrex. They say the feature is available on Windows PC and will be accessible from the in-game menu or for keyboard players by pressing Shift F1 shortcut on your keyboard. While playing the game, you can earn PlayStation trophies just like you can on the PlayStation console, which a huge thing. I mean, I know for myself, why I love Xbox app on PC and I, why I like playing games that potentially are on Steam as well that I could go out and buy for very cheap. But if they're in the Xbox app or they're in Xbox Game Pass, what I like about that side of things is that you just get that full integration of your achievements and it continues all in one place. So that's great to see here with PlayStation that if you do want to continue to track your trophies, no matter if you're playing on the PS5 or if you're playing on PC, that will continue. It says Ghost of Tsushima's director's cut on PC shares the same trophy set as the game on PlayStation 5 consoles. In addition, the PC version also has full support for achievements on Steam and the Epic Games. Store. I mean, that's the same across the, the both ecosystems now, which is cool to see. It says to make use of the feature like trophies, friends list, and crossplay, you could sign in with your existing account for PlayStation Network or create a new account. The use of PlayStation overlay is optional for both the single player experience and Legends mode. So there you have it. This to me is the first step to the full PlayStation launcher, the full PlayStation store on PC, where you're going to be able to play everything you have on PlayStation across both platforms and everything will be integrated into one place. And I think that's a great thing to see. I think that's a smart move by PlayStation. I'm happy to see them taking this step forward by becoming more multi-platform, by not locking everything to the console itself and giving people that full experience that no matter if you're on the PC, no matter if you're on PlayStation, whatever screen you're on, you're still going to get that full PlayStation experience, which is currently right now what has happened with Xbox over the last number of years. When you have the Xbox app, you get that full Xbox experience on your PC, you get your friends list, you get your achievements, you get everything tracked across both places, no matter where you play. So really happy to see this coming to Ghost of Tsushima. But to me, this definitely signals a way more full integration with all of their games coming out in the future. Now, on top of this information, we also got the system requirements for the game. You'll be able to range from playing at 720p, 30 frames per second, all the way up to 4K, 60 frames per second. And of course, to get the 4K, 60 frames per second, you will need an RTX 4800 or an AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT as your GPU. But all these specs are there to check your system requirements to see how you will be able to actually experience Ghost of Tsushima. So some great information there from PlayStation and just from an overall gaming perspective of more integration and being able to track your stats no matter what platform that you are playing on. Now, when it comes to a game that is releasing on the PS5, which is a first party Xbox game, it's Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves is wildly successful. Now, we originally had seen that they had about 30 million players that had jumped into the game, and now we can see that Rare has reached 40 million players ahead of the PlayStation 5 release. It says here that 
The Microsoft owned studio Rare announced the new player milestone on Wednesday ahead of the launch of season 12 and the PS5's release on April 30th. As I say, 40 million players across Xbox, Windows 10, and Steam is an amazing milestone to be able to talk about. And of course, it wouldn't have happened without you or brilliant, positive, and welcoming community who continue to surprise and impress us with the creativity and antics out on the ways to say. That said, I also want to take this opportunity to offer heartfelt thanks to the team who've worked on hard to deliver over 100 free updates since launch and have plenty more excitement and innovation on the horizon. Season 12 is almost here. And the new additions like Throwing Knives and the Bone Caller are going to transform our sound box yet again. They say, I'm also excited about getting to expand our community even further as we're just days away from launching on PlayStation 5 and introducing a whole new plethora of pirates to our shared world. So, I mean, there you have it. See if these wildly successful game. And it's funny that people still look at this game as anything but extremely successful. 40 million players is huge. And when this first launched, probably wouldn't have thought it would have gotten this far. It was definitely a risk that Rare was taking, that Xbox was taking to develop this game. And it has absolutely paid off. The question for me here is what the PS5 release on the horizon. What are they going for here? Like, what is their metric to measure the success? How many more players do they need to get into this game for it to be successful? Because I'm sure we've been hearing about all of the rising costs in game development and how much it's it's almost very difficult now to make a good ROI. You really need to get tons of people playing and buying the game. But Sea of Thieves, I would imagine, has made tons of money and the ROI on this game is very, very good. So it's interesting that Putting this on PS5 was one of those four games. How much more is Xbox looking for here? And how are they going to measure the success? Because as we know at the business update, they said they're looking at these four games. They're going to measure the success of them. And that will help them decide what they do going forward for more games coming onto the PlayStation platform. But clearly, Sea of Thieves is going to be popular on PS5. We've already seen the beta do very well. And we are going to... These numbers are going to jump by how many millions? We don't know. But it's going to bring in just more revenue and more success to an already extremely successful game from xbox's first party so pretty cool to see 40 million players there on sea of thieves now when it comes to the actual live service model which is sea of thieves and many other games out there we have some information here based on a survey about the actual sustainability and what developers think about the sustainability of the live service model. It says here, as a part of a new survey carried out by game developer, 600 developers were interviewed between February and March and asked a number of questions about business models and monetization in video games. And say participants were asked how concerned they were about the sustainability of live service business models commonly being used today. Of the developers asked, 39% said they were somewhat concerned, 31% said they were very concerned, and a quarter said they weren't concerned while the remaining 4% did not know. So this is basically here showing that 70% of all of these developers are actually worried in some way about the live service model. You can see here the survey and how it was given sustainability of live service games, and they kind of break down the different answers. They say our loss of interest from players and increased competition are the major drivers of sustainability concerns. So developers right now are looking at the live service model, and they're wondering if they're going to be able to keep up and if this is something that will allow the games industry to be sustainable and to thrive. And I mean, to me, when you look at games as a service and live service overall and multiplayer, it's gonna it's a select few games that really get all of the players and people continuously play those games over long periods of time. I mean, we're looking at Sea of Thieves, just now 40 million players. People have been playing that since 2018. Look at games like Fortnite. Even when there's new games that come out that are similar, people still go back and play Fortnite. You look at Call of Duty every year, which is essentially a, a live service game with all the seasons they're adding. Even if there's other FPSs that are trying to get in the fold there and compete with Call of Duty, most people are still just going back and playing Call of Duty because it's what they know. It's what all of their friends play. So it's being coming harder and harder for competition to actually break into the live service model. And if you don't have an established IP right now, I think you're really have to put something out very special to pull people away from the games that they are currently playing. And you kind of look at what is going on right now, specifically when you compare Xbox and PlayStation and PlayStation trying to make more multiplayer and more live service games. I think it's going to be relatively difficult for them to break into that market in, in a major successful way, unless they bring out something that completely blows everybody away. So that will be interesting to track because we know that they are trying to make more of those games and we know that they are trying to get into that market. So 70% though of these devs don't believe it is sustainable. And I would say it's sustainable 
if you're one of the games that currently has a ton of players, but if you are just putting your whole business model as a brand new IP, trying to get into this, it could be difficult. I think it'd be great though, to see more competition and people going across different types of games to kind of elevate everything that is currently out there. In fact, X Defiant is having their tests right this weekend, which I think could be a competitor to Call of Duty, but how much success will a game like that have when it does officially release with all the people who play Call of Duty every year, that will be another thing that will be cool to track and see how that does all play out. Okay, let's talk about World of Warcraft because one of the things when it comes to World of Warcraft is it now being an Xbox first party game, you would think they're going to launch it into Game Pass and they're going to launch it on console, something that I'm, I've been saying for a while that they absolutely should do. It will just open up this game to more people. I think it will revitalize it in a way where a lot of people who have never played it or just haven't played it in a very long time will jump back into it. And it looks like they're still talking about a console version. So this is something that could actually happen, which I think is extremely, extremely exciting. So this was an, a recent interview. Holly Longdale, the vice president and executive producer of World of Warcraft, discussed with VGC, and they were talking about the console version of the game. And here's what Holly says. We've got three these three expansions, and we're so excited about them. But yeah, of course, it would be very insincere to say that we're not like, of course, we're talking about that. We are Microsoft now. Now, on top of that, she also discusses what it's been like so far being under Microsoft, because that is a big change. Of course, now they haven't been there very long and things could evolve more in the future. But as of right now, she has some good things to say here with the acquisition of Microsoft. She says, if anything, it's just been helpful. We've got time with Helen Chang from Mojang and we're sharing information. So it's almost as if we have access to what worked for them. We got to speak to the Elder Scrolls Online team and share what we're up to and what's been working it's almost like we get a benefit there's no one asking us to do anything world of warcraft is doing very well and they're very proud of it of what's been able we've been able to accomplish so it's almost like just let it be and let it keep being awesome they've been tremendously supportive and it's like let blizzard be blizzard so there you have it i mean that isn't again surprising kind of what we've heard and what we've seen and everyone who's talked about this within microsoft have been consistent with their messaging of how their studios have actually been operating within Microsoft after acquisition. Now, you could argue and say, well, what else are they going to say? They're not going to throw the company that owes, owns them under the bus. But it's what we've seen with Bethesda. It's what we've seen with other first parties. It does really seem like Xbox, Microsoft allow these studios to kind of do what they do and don't get involved too much. Now, could th that change going forward with the whole shifting of the industry with the cutbacks and games being canceled and less risk happening because these developers need to make that money? That's where a concern comes in, especially when you have a big corporation owning all of these other studios. But as of right now, Xbox, I think, has done a great job with allowing their studios to be creative and try out different things. And Blizzard being Blizzard, that's probably for the better i'm sure there are things that microsoft and xbox that they could offer to them to help them improve which they do mention here which is another cool thing when you have all these studios working together is you get the technology you get the ips you get the knowledge and you get to put that all together and learn from the different studios out there so maybe blizzard will take those learnings and improve on world of warcraft but the end of the day, I hope the biggest thing that they do do by now being a part of Xbox and now being a part of Microsoft is release a console version of World of Warcraft. It just makes a ton of sense to me. It really is a no brainer. I wonder how much development time and how much effort would actually have to go in to transferring this game over to the console platform. All right, jumping over here, just a quick update on mouse and keyboard support that Xbox has now brought over to their Xbox Cloud Gaming. They've added a bunch more games here that actually will have mouse and keyboard compatibility. We have City Skylines, Mayor's Edition, City Skylines Remastered, House Flipper, Inculinati, Mountain Blade 2, Bannerlord, Narco, Puku Niku, Quake, Quake 2, Slime Rancher 2, State of Decay 2, Terraria, The Sims 4, and Valheim. All of these games now, if you were to go into your browser, you were to go onto the Xbox app and jump into Xbox Cloud Gaming, you won't actually have to connect a controller now to play these. You can just play via your mouse and keyboard. Cool to see them adding more games. And I expect this to continuously happen as the months go on, as Game Pass announcements come out. They will be, keep adding mouse and keyboard support to a bunch of Xbox Cloud Gaming games. Jumping over here, we got a couple more confirmations about release dates for two new xbox game pass games two day one games and that is little kitty big city 
and Steam World Heist 2. These were both shown off at the Indie the Nintendo Indie Direct, where they show off a bunch of indie games coming to the Nintendo Switch platform. But now we know when these two games that are releasing on the Nintendo Switch are also coming over to Xbox Game Pass. So you have Little Kitty Big City coming out on May 9th, and then you have SteamWorld Heist 2, which will be coming out on August 8th. So those are both games coming over to Xbox Game Pass, day and date. And now we know their actual official release dates, which is kind of interesting that this is how we, how we figure out a lot of these release dates for indie games specifically is when they are shown off at other showcases. They announce the release dates there where you have to go out and pay full price for them. But then they're also coming over to Xbox Game Pass. But that's it for me, guys. I will end the video there. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up. If you are new here, hit that subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next video.